Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand device models. Technically, we need to model our MOS transistors. For that, we need a circuit simulator. I'm going to talk about a circuit simulator called a SPICE, which stands for Simulation Program with Integrated Circuit Emphasis. The reason we are talking about SPICE here is because this is widely used by all the educational institutions today to understand the behavior of your circuit, and in this case, specifically the MOS transistor. Now it is very very important for a designer to understand how SPICE models the transistor because if you know the exact behavior of modeling then you can see the variations of certain parameters and its effect on your output and you also know how to interpret your output and what variations you need to make. For that you need to understand how does your simulator model your transistor. If you know that accurately you can do different permutations and combinations you can do a better analysis of your output. You can match with what you had understood in the classroom to a real time scenario and so on and so forth. So here we are talking about some of the device models used by SPICE. We are going to talk about level one model, which is also called as MOS one model. Before we get into that, let's understand that SPICE was a software that was distributed by University of California, Berkeley 50 years back, technically on an average. The three built-in MOSFET models then when they had made this was MOS1, MOS2, MOS3 also called as level 1, level 2 and level 3. Now level 1 models are nothing but the models which takes into consideration the square law, IV characteristics. It also takes into consideration your channel and modulation and body effect but it does not take into consideration any of the second order effects which we have already studied. Level 2 is an analytical MOSFET model also called as MOS2 model. This will take into consideration your second order effects. So would be level three, which is a semi empirical model. Here we are not getting into the details of each of these models. The idea here is to understand the basics of level one and level two. Just recently, Berkeley also brought out a new model, which was nothing but DSIM-3, which is currently being widely used in the public domain, which is called as Berkeley short channel IGFET model. IGFET is nothing but insulated gate field effect transistor. It has more accurate characterization of your MOSFET characteristics. This is the most recent one which has come out. There are also commercial models which redefine your device in such a way that more accuracy is achieved in real time. And one of them is PSPICE, which again I'm pretty sure some of you would have used in your undergraduate years, it stands for Personal Computer Simulation Program with Integrated Circuit Emphasis. The scope of this clip is not to teach you how to write a SPICE file. The idea is to understand level one model and level two model at a superficial level. So here we go and understand the level one model, which is also known as Hitchman Hodges model. This model is very closely related to the Shockley model, which I've already put up on the screen. This is nothing but the equation of ID in the cutoff linear and saturation region, which we have already studied. So level one MOSFET model is closely related to this. Now the equations, the actual equations, used for the level one and channel MOSFET in SPICE are as follows, which I have written. Not that difficult to comprehend. IDS is equal to zero when VGS is less than VT. IDS equal to something, 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 something when VDS less than VGS minus VT and when VDS greater than VGS minus VT. Now, when I said something, something here is what we need to understand. If you see here properly, the parameters for the SPICE model are all given in caps. I have put K in a capital value, P in a capital value, W in the capital value, L in the capital value, Lambda is all in caps and so on and so forth. So this is one thing which we need to note. The parameters from the SPICE model are all given in caps. I've shown it in caps here. When I show you level two, you have to understand that it's in caps, but I will just be showing in the normal fashion. Also notice that the beta where it was in Shockley's model, it was beta is written here. It is replaced by K P W effective into L effective where K P is nothing but it's a model parameter, right? The model is saying it as K P, but technically for us, we have to understand that K P is nothing but K N because it's an N MOS, right? K N dash, which is nothing but mu N C O X. So K P will take into consideration the mobility of your electrons and the C O X. W effective and L effective is nothing but your actual effective channel width and your effective channel length. And then we know that in saturation, when we understood the channel length modulation parameter, we understood that the equation of ID was multiplied by one plus lambda into VDS, where lambda is nothing but the channel length modulation coefficient. We have already studied this, isn't it? 
Similarly, I have also put up the value of the threshold voltage or the equation of the threshold voltage in the MOSFET model, which is equal to VTO plus gamma square root of phi plus VSB minus square root of phi, where we know that VTO is nothing but the zero bias threshold voltage, which is as good as in our equation, it was VTO small. This is not O technically, it's zero because it means zero substrate bias effect. Gamma is the body effect coefficient, which in equation when we did, we did it this way and rest of the terms are very straightforward. This VSB is because of substrate bias effect in case of its present. So these are one or two equations like this. There are a lot of other parameters in level one, which I've also mentioned in the handout. You might want to refer to that. Now level one MOSFET model is used when accuracy is less important than the simulation turnaround time. Let's take an example. For digital switching circuits, especially when only a qualitative simulation of timing and function is needed. At that point of time, level one runtime can be about half that of using a level two model. So level one is however used in such a scenario, but also we need to understand is that level one is highly inaccurate. And because it's highly inaccurate, it will just give us an approximate idea. So level one, we can, the equations are very simple. We can easily correlate with our handmade analysis also and are simple. However, they don't take into consideration your second order effects like courier mobility, velocity saturation, weak inversion model, subthreshold conduction, and so on and so forth. So for that, we need to get into level two. I hope you have followed the level one model. Now let's plunge into level two. To continue with level two model, this model is based on group from an equations. Now this include a lot of second order effects like velocity, saturation, mobility, degradation, subthreshold conduction, DIBL, etc. Here I have just mentioned the value of the threshold voltage VT0 equal to phi GC minus Q NSS upon COX plus mod of twice phi F plus gamma into square root of twice phi F. Where phi GC is nothing but gate to channel work function and NSS. Now Q is the charge fixed surface interface charge density. Like this, we can write the equations of ID also, but it's a quite a complicated equation. So I've mentioned in the notes for your reference, if you need to refer to. Level two, although comparatively accurate, is not enough to accurately map the measured IV characteristics of modern transistors. And along with that, though it being more accurate or gives us more accurate results than simple level one model, its accuracy is still not sufficient to achieve good agreement with the experimental data, which we find out, especially for narrow channel MOSFETs. And hence we need to make a lot of semi empirical corrections, which are included in level three model. Here I can also show different, different equations related to channel length in the saturation mode, variation of mobility with electric field, saturation of courier velocity, all that. But then to get into the details of all of that is beyond the scope. So I hope you have followed the basics of level one and level two device models. Stay tuned for further tips and thank you very much.